in my book, I love the saying, and I use it all the time, things don't happen to us, they happen for us. Everything. It isn't always easy to figure it out, may I add, but everything does happen for us. Everything. And sometimes we need help from others outside of this little mind in our head that thinks in a little box. Sometimes we need help from other people to get us out of that thinking, that perception. So again, many, many, many learnings, many, many, many healings that are available to us every single day of our lives if we simply look at this concept that everything happens for us. Let's all together, let's say three times, everything happens for me. Everything happens for me. One more time. Everything happens for me. And one more time. Everything happens for me. How do you feel? Do you feel empowered? I mean, I, I'm no longer a victim. It's not everything's happening to me. Everything happens for me. It empowers. Bring it on. Right? Because we are, have the understanding that that is what is happening. Everything is happening for me. I'm not saying don't allow yourself to be a victim. Let yourself for those two minutes. Let it, let it rip. You know? We, don't want, to make, we want to make sure that we're not pretending it doesn't exist. And that sometimes can happen in this, in this way of thinking. Everything's good. It's all good. I have no negative thoughts. Not possible. <laughs> Acknowledge it, give it a little bit of time, and then say, I'm going to focus on something else. I love science of mind because it says, Ernest Holmes says, a trained mind is much more powerful than an untrained mind. So the more that we can focus and remember that everything happens for us, the more we can understand that and really get it, is the happier that we're going to be because we're going to be empowered. And we're going to ask ourselves, why? Why is this happening for me? Why is this happening? So in conclusion, I really want to encourage you to do some things this holiday season. I want you to look at your life and identify those situations, the people, that there still is a little bit of unresolvedness within your consciousness. And the way to, to really know if you've dealt with an issue is when you think of that person, if your body temple doesn't react. Reaction is the best way of knowing if something is up or not. Reaction within your body. The first thing is identify them. And then, I love this thing, isn't it wonderful? It keeps on hitting me in the head. Um, the first thing is to identify the things that are, that are disturbing your peace that you need to forgive yourself. Uh, you need to forgiveness around. Then move into the self-forgiveness. And it's interesting, when you do apply that self-forgiveness to your own life, it's fascinating how it does shift. I remember when I did that many years ago with my therapist, I did that around a situation with my mother. And I'm very clear, it wasn't what my mother did. I wasn't clear at the time, by the way. Um, but I'm very clear at the time, I'm, I was very clear that it wasn't about her, but I thought it was. And when I was able to shift my perception to saying it wasn't what she did to me, it was how I perceived what happened, and when I forgot, forgave myself for forgetting who I truly was, I forgave myself for betraying my truth that of my perfection, my wholeness, that I am enough. Miraculously, it shifted. And I love, of course, miracle says that holy instant. Miracle. A miracle can happen that holy instant because I realized that shift of perception, that it was never about her. It was just about my perception. And bless my parents' heart. You know, when I put this book out, I'm very clear in it that I said, I share things in there about my experience. And I share it from where I was and how I got where I am. And I, and I called both my parents beforehand and I said, please understand, this is not about you. It's about how I perceived what was happening back then. And I'm sorry if, it, if there's even an ounce of energy in this book that hurts you, because that was not the intention, okay? So again, applying that self-forgiveness, when you do it, you will be amazed at how it shifts. Identify the situations. This might be a little challenging for you, but it's very powerful. Identify the situations in your life that have brought you here. And I don't know about you, but the thing that brought me to this way of life was not pleasant. It was a very painful situation, which I am so deeply grateful for. Why? Because that situation brought me into this world of this way of thinking, 
where I believe is the truth that that stuff didn't happen for didn't happen because of me. It happened for me. Where I realized that that stuff that brought me into the rooms, into the churches, was the stuff that enabled me to clear away all the old irrational beliefs that I had carrying around in my consciousness that weren't working for me. And just a little side note: ninety-five percent of our belief systems are negative. Ninety-five percent of our beliefs in our consciousness are negative that are in direct opposition to the truth of who we are. So it's up to us to focus on the 5%. And how do we know where the 5% are? There are things that are in alignment with our perfection, our divinity, and our wholeness, period. Anything that, that talks to you in your head that is not in alignment with that is not the truth of who you are. Pretty, that's pretty easy, right? That, in fact, is how you're able to do that. Definitely, I want you to acknowledge yourself. Acknowledge yourself for showing up at places like this. Acknowledge yourself because it takes great courage to do this kind of work. It takes great courage to have, to have the dedication to show up at workshops and seminars that, that, are, that bring up the painful stuff, but they bring it up so it can be released. Up and out. It takes great, great courage. And I certainly know that because of my own, my own journey. I didn't think I was courageous, but in hindsight, it takes great, great courage to simply show up. And then, of course, give thanks to yourself for showing up. And then, of course, give thanks, even if only energetically, to those people, places, and situations that brought you to the present moment where you are today. So we talked about the beauty of giving for forgiveness, most importantly to ourselves, giving ourselves the gift of freedom, the gift of not being brought back to that, that consciousness of hell whenever we think of something or someone. And we really talked about the, the, the power of giving thanks, of thanksgiving, most especially around this time of year. There's a wonderful person, and I always mispronounce this gentleman's name. I think it's Meister Eckhart. He said a wonderful, wonderful um, statement that I will leave you with. He said, if the only prayer you say in your whole life is thank you, that would suffice. I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to be of service to you today. I love you, and I honor you. Thank you.